Ancient ruins are awesome, but I've always struggled to find a nice method in Blender to make them. Uh, but I think I finally cracked the code and the method is super fun. Let's make some ruins. I think in general, a pretty good approach is to start off making your architecture as if though it was new and then destroy, erode and mold it into a ruin. I will start modeling a nice column or pillar. This is just some basic modeling, but I do like to build everything in separated parts. This makes it a bit easier if I need to adjust the proportions of my design later on. And we will remesh everything anyways, so we don't really need to worry about topology right now. I want my architect to feel ancient, so I'm trying to make everything feel simple yet striking. Fancy. And you can always add some cool ancient in writing or decoration by just grabbing a couple of cubes then rotating them around then mirror array slap it onto your asset and boom when you're happy with your design or have given up trying to make it look nice then we're ready for the next step remeshing we will select our pillar and apply a remesh modifier by default it is set to voxel which is great because it is the one we need to use but it is a little aggressive and our pillar looks like a melted popsicle not to worry, we can adjust the settings. Decreasing the top value makes the voxel sizes smaller for the remesher, but this increases our poly count a lot. But once again, there's a quick fix. Adjust the value in the adaptivity field and the voxel remesher tries to use less geometry where the planes are flatter and more uniform but it preserves the more detailed areas like our decorations pretty well. It does give everything a little bit of a softer look, but I think that works quite well for an ancient ruin that has battled the elements through time. All right, let's take it a step further with some textures. First, we gotta apply the remesh modifier on our pillar. Then we'll have to unwrap it. To do that, we'll press U and hit cube projection. That works best for our remeshed model here. Then we can simply go online or use mega scans and grab some nice textures. Personally, I really like using texturehaven.com. They got some really nice stuff in there and it's 100% free, but wherever you get your textures is nice. I found this really nice medieval brick texture that I think will work really well for the ancient look. And I'm just gonna use the color map, roughness map and displacement map. I really like using displacement maps more than using bumps and normals because it's just one map that gives you all that detail and then the ability to maybe display if you're working in something like cycles. It is perfect. Let's crush it. To make our pillow look more like a ruin, we have a few different approaches we could try. A really simple one is just using good old booleans. Just create a new cube, subdivide, randomize, stretch it into something chunky. Then select your pillar, go to modifiers, boolean, and boom and turn on the fast method. It is faster and it just works better still, I think. Then select our chunky boy and start intersecting it with our pillar. And to see the result in real time, go to the viewport display on chunky boy, set it to bounce and boom, simple ruin. Now you can just duplicate and rotate your chunky boy around a little bit, intersect it here, intersect it there, and we have a ruin like pillar. A tiny problem are these areas where the booleans intersect. It creates these nasty texture stretching. To fix this, we will create a new material slot on our pillar, and on that, we will create our intersecting material. I will just create a duplicate of our pillar material and modify it a bit. Then we go to the Boolean objects and give them that same material. So now when they intersect, they look for the same material and applies that one. Magic. And while this method is nice and simple, I think we can take it a step further. Instead of using the booleans, we're going to use this really nice add-on that comes with Blender. So we'll go to Preferences, Add-ons, and search Cell Fracture. This add-on lets us do amazingly fun things. To activate it, you can press F3 to search, type in Cell Fracture, click it, and then we get all these nice settings to tweak. Um, yeah, I don't know, just let's go. Then the Cell Fracture will, like a magician, cocoon itself from the audience while it transforms itself into something magical. The same thing, but broken. Like a real magician. This process has now broken our pillar into many different chunks and left the original one intact. Neat! You can see it missed a few spots. Uh, this can be fixed through tweaking the settings and depends on your mesh density and topology. You'll get the best results with a bit of trial and error. We are doing ruins, so this totally works for me. But now comes the really magic part. Grab all the fractured pieces of our pillar, then go to Object, Rigid Body and click Add to Active. Then create a plane underneath. And again, go to Object, Rigid Body, and set the plane to Add to Passive. And then go to the start of the timeline, click Play, and boom, a crumbling ruin. Setting our pieces to Active Rigid Bodies makes them affected by gravity in the scene. But setting our plane to Passive makes it a collider for our Active Rigid Bodies, giving us this simulation. Wonderful! 
Something else you can try out, which I found quite useful for art directing the pillars, was simply to go back in and select the bottom half or something of the pillar and setting those to passive instead of active. Then select the other half and go to the physics and simulations tab over on the right and then adjust the friction for each of these pieces. This makes them stick together and creates more interesting results. And if you all click on the input fields, it will apply those numbers to all the pieces selected. Then just reset your timeline, click play and watch the magic unfold. I gotta say I am in love with this technique and the piece we're left with looks awesome. But one little problem has returned, like when we were doing booleans, where the pieces have been cut by the cell factor, the material doesn't look quite so good. But we already created a new material for this exact problem, so we'll just use that one. Here it is important that you have your new material in the second material slot of your pillar because then we can set the material on the cell factor to be one instead of zero, and then the cut areas will have this new material on it. Then just add rigid bodies to everything again, run the sim, and <laughs> it never gets old. And the cut off areas look much better this time. Brilliant. And while this add-on is a little bit limited, there are still some really cool features. To get even more control, you can use the annotation tool. Draw on your mesh by selecting surface in the top, then select annotation in the cell factor options, run the sim, and then it fractures everything around the drawn lines instead. Neat! Next up, I will create a ruined landscape. To do so, I will create an entire temple by just applying some arrays to the pillars. Whoop, and then just model some beams. Same texture, ancient writing, you're a master by now, and arrays, whoop, a full temple. We can also give it some floor tiles. Just create a cube, then some arrays, boom, tiles, finito. And with that done, it was time to play around with the settings and teach those pillars who is the boss. <laughs> Total destruction. Then I just added some stuff to the overall scene and I tried to breathe some life into my set, started finding some cool angles and shots to frame my ruins. And I added some cool dead trees to my scene. Psst, I totally got a tutorial on making these trees. Link the top, bottom, links everywhere. Check it out. At this point, I really felt like a photographer in sort of knockoff Greece. When I was done with my shots, I rendered them out to Photoshop, adjusted with light and shadow, and added some knights facing off before a duel. And there we have the final ruin. And that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, you can check out the full raw unedited process of everything you just saw over on our Gumroad. With that said, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.